Hi everybody, my name is Arthur and welcome to another Pixel Pet tutorial where we are coding our Clash Royale light game. Uh, last class we uh, made so our unit, it will cross the bridge, right? And once it has crossed the bridge, it will then turn to the enemy castle. But we have to fix some stuff here first that you can see that my ghost doesn't really finish uh, crossing the bridge, right? It, it changed its target before finish crossing the bridge. That's because we are just checking if my player's position is bigger than my bridge position and my bridge position here is zero. So if my unit's position is like two, that would be like right here, it can already change the target to the castle. So that's the first thing I wanna to change today. So I'll stop my game here and I'm gonna go to my unit class. Here on my unit class, I'll go on the loop tab and here we are checking if self.x is greater than self.target.x, right? But instead, I can say, I can check here instead of, of just checking if it's greater, I want to check if it's greater than the target x plus 100 pixels. So I'm not checking anymore if my unit is greater than this point, I'm checking if my unit uh, X position is greater than more or less this point here, I guess. Let's try, let's see how it looks like. So my unit goes there, it crosses the bridge and then it turns to the castle. I think I can even make this bigger, like 130, just to make sure the unit's crossing the bridge entirely before changing its uh, target to be the enemy castle. And there you go. I'll just round it up to 150 and that's it. That's my final value. And this looks way better already, right? Other thing that I want to do is all my ghosts are yet looking to the left side, even though they're moving to the right side. So I'm going to fix that by going here on my unit star tab. And here on my unit star tab, I will add here on the top. I can say, so what I want to do is I want to flip my, my unit to the other side because my unit is, is looking to the left. So I want my unit to look to the right, right? So we can do that by dealing with the scale of this unit. So this right now is my ghost inside the game, right? My ghost is looking to the left side, as we can see whenever I spawn my ghost, right? It's looking to the left side. So to make my ghost to look to the right side, what I want to do is I want to deal with the ghost scales. So you can see that I can rescale my ghost, right? And it's the same code on Pixelpad when we use code to do that. So how can I make, how can I use my scale to make my ghost look to the other side? So you can see that if I increase my scale, my ghost will just increase in size, right? But whenever I decrease my scale, I keep decreasing, 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 at some point, it will turn to the other side, it will invert. So if here, this is the regular size of my ghost, okay? So if here, my scale was one, whenever I flip my, my ghost to the other side like this, this scale will be minus one because it's the opposite right? It's the same size. The image is the same size. The only difference is because it is uh, turned to the other side, right? And here we are talking about the X scale, because I also have the Y scale, but this would flip my player upside down. So let's go on pixel pad here and let's try it out. So I can change my scale by saying self dot scale. So I'm changing my own scale but I have to specify in which axis. Am I changing the Y or the X axis? So let's try changing the uh, X axis, right? Because this is the one that we want to change. So one is the regular size. So if I just say self.scale X, uppercase X here, okay, pay attention. Uh, if I just say self.scale X is equals one, it won't change anything, right? If I say that my scale X is two, then it would, you can see that it's bigger, right? But only on the X axis that makes my, my player to look kind of stretched, right? So if I make it smaller, 0 0.5, for example, 
it will always also be stretched. So what if I make it negative? So if I make it negative 0 0.5, what happens? So it is still stretched, but it's already looking to the other side. So if I use minus one here, I totally flip my image to the other side. So one is the regular size, is, is the regular scale, and my unit's looking to the left. And then whenever I change it to minus one, I flip the scale X, and then now my player is looking to the right. Great, we've just fixed two problems. Now we can start adding lives to our castles and start making our units to take life from the enemy castle. So I'll stop my game here, I'll save my game. And now I'm gonna go to the castle class and the castle class doesn't have anything on it, right? Because my castle doesn't behave anyway, it's just there, right? But for now, it will start behaving because my castle will have a life. So I can say that self dot life. And I will say that my life is equals 100. So the, all the castles, the both castles, right? Because my player base is a castle and my enemy base is also a castle. So both castles will have a hundred life, okay? You can see that when I press play, it hasn't changed yet anything. But now we are gonna make my player, my unit, to be able to deal damage to my castle whenever my enemy touches the, the enemy castle. Okay, so I'm gonna go inside my unit and to make my unit deal damage, my unit needs an attack damage, right? An amount of damage that my unit will give or will deal. So after I set the speed here, and I'm just putting it together here to be all the attributes uh, close together. So I have the speed that equals two, and I will also have a attack damage. And this I'll say that is equals one for now. All right, so my unit now has an attack damage and it still hasn't changed anything because we just created two variables. Now my unit has an attack damage and now my castle has a life, but we are not yet uh, dealing the damage to the castle, right? So next thing I want to do is whenever my unit touches the castle, the enemy castle, I want my unit to disappear and deal, and deal the damage. All right, so here on the loop tab, what we're looking for is collisions. So if I'm looking for something touching something else, this is a collision. And we've done collisions already. If you look here at the pointer on the loop tab, we've done collisions between the pointer, right? Self is the pointer and the card. And if there is a collision, then I create my gas goals, right? So for the unit on the loop tab, I want to check collisions between the unit and the enemy castle, right? So I can say that if uh, get collision, so if I get any collision between myself and the enemy castle, so game dot enemy base, right? Because that's my that's the name of my enemy's castle. Here, enemy base is a castle, right? So if there is a collision between myself, that is the unit, and the enemy base, then what I want to do for now is I want to make my unit to disappear. That's the first thing. And to make my unit to disappear, all I can say is I can just use destroy here and I want to tell who I'm destroying. So I'm destroying myself. So destroy self, let's try. I press play, I create my unit, it walks, crosses the bridge and now it should touch the castle and disappear. Oh, it didn't do that. So the problem is because whenever we are using a get collision, I have to use an object, so myself, the unit, and the other one, I cannot use an object. So here I'm using an object because I'm using an instance of the class castle. So the enemy base is a castle, right? So my enemy base is an instance of my class castle. So I cannot do that. I cannot use an object here. I cannot use an instance of a class here. I have to use a class. So I'm looking for collisions between myself and anything from the class uh, castle. But now you can see that we have a problem. That is whenever I create my unit, it already gets destroyed, 
That's because whenever I create my unit, my unit is created in the same position as my castle, and it is detecting collisions between myself, the unit, and any castle, right? So the next thing we want to do is we want to check which castle is this. Is this the player base or is this the enemy base? Because I just want to destroy my unit if it is the enemy base, right? So let me stop my game here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside uh, the game class and I'm going to give a new variable to the castles, right? So here I can say after I give the sprite to the player base, I can say that my game dot player base dot team is equals player. So I'm saying that my player base has a team and the team is player, right? And now I'm going to do the same for my enemy base, but instead the game dot enemy base dot team is equals enemy like that. So here we need to use the quotes, okay, for player and enemy, because if we don't use the quotes, uh, Pixelpad would think that player is a variable, but it's not a variable. I'm just saying that my team has to be player, right? And I don't want to say that my team is whatever is inside the variable player. That's what I would be doing here. So if I had, for example, here a variable called team, and I say that this is equals player, I could say that my player base team is equals team because then it would look inside the team and see that it's player, but that's not the case. What we want to do is just set the team to be player. And here we set the team to be enemy. All right, let's go back to the unit now and the loop tab. And here we get a collision between myself and a castle. And that's all we are checking. But now I want to get the exact castle who has collided with me and check if that castle has a team player or a team enemy. So to get the exact castle that has collided with me, I can use the same function we used here because this get collision will return true or false, of course. So if I have collided with a castle, that's true, right? So the if will be triggered. But if I haven't collided with any castle, then it will be false. Then the trigger, uh, the, the if won't be triggered. But it also returns for us the exact object that has collided with us. So I can say that uh, castle is equals, and I can use the same code here. So castle is equals get collision between self and castle. So here, what we are doing is check if I have collided with any object from the class castle. If so, then give me this castle. Who is this castle that I have collided with? And then I check later again if, if this castle dot team, so if this castle has a team that is equals equals, so two equals again, because that's an if, that's a question, right? I'm, I'm questioning if the castle's team is equals enemy. If the castle's team is equals enemy, then I want to destroy myself. So here I have to indent this destroy. So this will only uh, run if this is true, right? So again, uh, have I collided with any object from the class castle? If so, give me this castle and check if this castle's team is enemy. If so, then destroy myself. So whenever I play my game, I create my unit, my unit is colliding with that castle, but that castle seems in, is not enemy, so it doesn't destroy itself. But then once it collides with the enemy castle, then it gets destroyed. So now our player is getting destroyed when touching the enemy castle, but it's yet not dealing damage to the castle. So what I want to do is whenever my player collide, whenever my unit collides with the enemy castle here, before I destroy myself, before I destroy this unit, I want this unit to deal damage to that castle, right? So I can just say here that castle.life will be equals castle.life 
minus self dot attack damage. So I'm saying here that uh, if I have collided with a castle that is an enemy from the enemy team, then this castle's life will now be the castle's life minus my attack damage. So my attack damage is uh, 1, right? And the castle's life starts with 100. So if I have collided with the castle, uh, the castle's life will be now 100 minus 1. And that will make the castle's life to be 99. Okay, so uh, we cannot know if this is working or not because we don't have the value of the, the, the amount of life that the castles has, right? But what we can do here is after I apply the damage to the enemy castle uh, and before I destroy myself, I can say here print and I can tell the pixel pad to print the castle's life. So print castle dot life. So I apply the damage and then I print the castle dot life. So now we should be seeing the castle's life going down uh, here on the console window. So let's see, I will create a lot of ghosts and they will all cross the bridge and go towards the enemy castle. And then you can see the enemy castle's life going down. Right, that's pretty cool. And that's it what I had for today's video. So press save in your game and we will keep going on the next video. Bye.